So here we are, live with episode 16. I think it's hard to believe that we've done 16 of these, but today we're going to be building a taxi dispatcher web app along with Jose, the other developer advocate. Hey. Hey, hey. Good morning, Olivia. Good afternoon. So here we are. Um, we're actually going to be working through a tutorial that you may have seen before um, with version six, which is there's a taxi cars dispatcher tutorial if you want to follow along, which is on our developer portal. And mm -hmm. we're going to be following this tutorial exactly. Um, we even have it sectioned out um, into what we're going to be doing. Um, and then when this is up on YouTube, also, you'll see the sections more clearly in terms of just setting up the basic map and all the steps afterwards in terms of adding a passenger and adding the different taxi cars and things like that. But for now, if you also want to look at that, that's where the documentation is and all the code that you would um, essentially copy and paste and what we're going to be using. So it's it's pretty one-to-one -one, uh, for this episode, which I think is good. Mm. Yeah, the, the link for this uh, article is in the description down below. I'll go through a little bit of sections here. So the mm. first step that we want to do um, is we want to initialize the map. And this is what you see in most of our uh, tutorials or most of the documentation if you're on the developer portal. Um, you start with using the CDN to access the SDK services, the map layer, the CSS. Um, we set a basic style. And then we instantiate the map with your specific API key. So as always, you want to create a developer account on developer.tomtom.com and get your API key. And then down below, it also centers the map on a specific location when you open the web page, as opposed to the zoomed out version. So this will actually um, set it to a specific lat and long, which you can, of course, change to wherever you want it to be. And as you see yeah. up here, we set a specific style as well. It's the uh, basic initialization of the map, the initial location, and getting the correct uh, libraries that you want to use. In this case, uh, we're going to be using the version 6 of the SDK for web. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so I have opened an empty file for us, and I have, I have opened the application also as well here for us to follow what's going on, to see uh, the progress. Let's go to the article itself, to the tutorial. I can found it here. Uh, prerequisites. Let's see. You need an API key. Oh, yes, we do have an API key. I'm going to copy it later. And then map initialization. Use the following code. Very straightforward. Uh, I assume this will use the oh, we use the, the content distribution network, the CDN, in order to download the SDK for web version six. And let's see, we can copy this into our code. Yeah, so this is the easy part, right? Because we're just able to yeah. copy all of the code from the documentation step by step into a working file. <laughs> Correct. Let's see. Uh, okay, the API key. I have one from the previous episode. I think this is the one we're this using our for our API key that we consistently Perfect. use. So um... consistently, yes. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna save this and I'm going to reload the application and see. Okay, I think we have a map. So in this section, we're gonna go ahead and add the passenger. Um, you're going to add the passenger essentially as a marker on the map. You want to add the variables to the JavaScript section, um, which is part of the documentation down below. And then after that, you want to declare the variable before you initialize the map, um, accompanied by our very interesting strange fellow from some open images who looks very confused as to where he is. Um, you know, the passenger <laughs> will be looking for a ride, and, and that's how we'll start this section um, when we get to it. So we'll add the passenger, and then you'll be able to see the passenger on the map as well. We can see the map now. So next next step, uh, we have to add a passenger. We have to add where the passenger is. So I can see that the passenger have hard coded coordinates in this location, and there is a variable that comes to mark that have the marker, and how to create the marker for the passenger. Let's go on the here. Um, okay, I'm going to try to keep this some order in the code. Let's see. This is the compass map. API key. Let's add it after the map. Um, okay, the constants, variables. Let's move it up there. Move it up. So we have added the uh, create passenger marker, and I can see that we're using an image 
that is the man waving an arm, which will be in the image folder when you, oh, here it is. Oh, here's the guy. That's, that's a little passenger guy. <laughs> Let's take a look what is next. Now we have to center the map on the passenger. So center, it will be the passenger in it coordinates. And if we go to the code, the passenger marker is here. Oh, okay. The following code puts the marker in the map and opens a pop-up. I want this to happen when the map is already loaded. So that means we have to put a an event happening when the map is loaded. Already finished loading. Let's do. Let's do off. Let's do this. So that way we, we uh, actually add the passenger marker with the map itself. How could it look like this now? It says, click anywhere on the map to change the passenger location. We can't do that yet, but that's the next step, is to be able to um, click and have the passenger move with the click on the map. I believe the next one actually shows the little guy, yeah. So in this section, we'll be changing the marker position, which is changing the, um, that is changing the passenger position, correct? So this is a little guy and we're gonna, this is moving the, so you can move the, the passenger around. Mm -hmm. um, and that's done by creating an event which just changes that position on click. Um, so this is actually very similar to mm -hmm. if you have a marker, um, to setting something where you would just change that marker on click, the passenger is just acting as this marker so that you can set their location for this taxi dispatcher app. So you can set the pickup point um, essentially for the taxi. Um, and so as you can see here, eventually you'll have a dialog box which says to click anywhere on the map and you'll click around and uh, the little dude here will, will uh, set his location accordingly. <laughs> so we can add this draw passenger marker on map, which is a function. Since there seems to be like the response of a, of, of a reverse geocoding. We perform a click here, we do a reverse coding, and the result, I want it to be draw the passing on the results. And that's where we get the reverse geocode um, for location and actually set uh, the marker itself um, on each click. Yes. Yes. So let's see it. So this happens on click. This happens on click, so we get the location where the click happened, which is this event long or lot. Excuse me from the services from the, the SDK. Uh, reverse your code, we pass the API key, we pass the position, and at the end we just do it, which is the function that we just copied here. Let's see. So that means that every time we click, reload, every time we click on the map, the little guy move with us. And uh, it tells you in the pop-up what is the address where you click. Let's see. What's next? Uh, next, so this section is adding the taxi. So you can see here, we're actually just go ahead and adding the taxis. And it does work with the images, right, Jose? So this is one of the images that you do ah, get yes. from. Yeah, so you can see on here, you can see the little taxi image, um, but you're creating those taxis and then you can see that it's a taxi three, taxi two, and then you have the passenger here so you can start to see um, how the dispatching will begin to work because you had the images of the different taxis sort of floating around here. Um, and so essentially, you're, you're, these is, this is just you uh, manually adding the taxis, which you'll use later to start to draw routes. The addresses of these taxis are hard-coded right now. And mm -hmm. I can see that we are going to be in around Amsterdam. This is at the, if I recognize the yeah, map so correctly. Yeah, so Amsterdam. It's probably under here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, of course, the, uh, these, these addresses can come also from, from your backend. So whenever you have a, a series of um, assets that you want, to, uh, you want to keep a track of it, you can come from the backend right now. But for the example, I think we just hard coded them. Now we just add, yeah, we add the taxis. So we have a function that create a taxi with an object, and they are populated inside an array. Mm, OK. Let's copy this one. Let's see how it looks like. Oh, first, OK, we have a taxi config. I don't want this in here. Let's move it up. <clears throat> I can see the create taxi function. You have the name, the color, 
taxi. I assume this is the color of the route that's going to be created for the mm -hmm. taxi. The initial coordinates and where the file is for the icon, width and height of the icon. And then we are going to create a array of objects right now. So let's see, let's continue. Okay, so what's the next step here? I can see that after adding out, we're going to set like this, set default taxi, taxi config, which is the function, and we're going to initia, initialize them. This just to add the markers. I can see here we are adding markers. Yeah, are we, are we essentially adding just an array of markers? Um, yeah. And we're adding an image to each of them, right? So we have, you know, taxi two, we have the image for taxi two, et cetera. When the map is loaded, after adding the pop up for the passenger, we add the taxis so that they look initialize mm -hmm. and put them for the taxis. You think it will have some effect? Let's see. Let's see if we get the taxis when we load the map. And there we go. We yeah. see the taxis as soon as we load the we map. You can see taxis right. now. Yeah, and you can still move the guy. Hello, I'm here. No, I'm here. No, I'm here. No, <laughs> I'm here. And then next section is that we're going to add a submit button with the CSS. So here now after you have your taxis and you can see the images and then you can see the image here of your passenger where you can click to move its location. Um, you can also have the submit button. So you want to set up that submit button because that will set up um, your CSS and the style of your application so that when you're ready to um, create a route and to start the taxi dispatch process that you have some visual feedback. Um, okay, of saying, hey, we have the taxis, now I'm passengers where I want them to be, and I want to go ahead and submit to start the process, and this is some of the CSS that you will be using. It does cut off a little bit here just for the sake of the slides, but again, all the code is on, on the documentation, on the tutorial uh, for the taxi dispatcher, uh, where we go ahead and uh, set up that button. Yeah, so now we have all the CSS here to actually set up the submit button for when we want to actually get the routes and pick up the passenger. The bottom is under the map. Ah, okay. Hmm. I want to see this. This button, it is there, but I'll show you where it is. Look at that. It's right here at the bottom. <laughs> we see it. It's yeah. just very small at the bottom right there. Yes, we have to add the CSS stuff, which is all there. Uh, okay, let's take a look. Let's just copy it. And I assume we do have a style section. Here it is, a style section inside the code, the demo. Got it there. And if I go back to the code and reload, voila, look at this. It's already been here correctly. And now assigned. we have the beautiful CSS <laughs> from earlier. <laughs> Obviously, I probably does nothing. That doesn't do anything yet. Yeah, not yet. Okay, let's see. Let's continue then. What's the next step? After it. Um, it seems to be that when we click, you want to clear all the routes because you want to keep clicking, click recreating the routes depending of the if the passenger moves around. The little yeah, guy. So we want to clear the previous routes before um, okay. we draw the new ones, obviously, so that we're not okay. um, overloading and also not uh, drawing on top of old routes. <laughs> I can see that the route is an array. Now you want to. Okay, all the roads. I'm going to collapse a little bit this one. Where my variables here. So put this an array. Then this is the function to clear all the roads. I can see that's uh, removing uh, all the layers. I can put it on the bottom. Save. Yeah, and. <clears throat> And we have a function that we have to execute when, when we click the button. And I think we have to add the on click event. Yeah, on click event listener, yes. Yeah, submit. Yeah. Yeah, here. Because after yeah, that, that will set us up to draw the routes. Yeah, correct. So let's see what we added there. Let's add it also in the whole initialization process when the map is loaded. So now we are adding the listener. And if we go into the code, well, I'm assuming that we should, if you're clicking here, you are clearing all the routes every time we click the button. Mm -hmm. And make sure this is actually happening.
Right, let's see it. Let's put a log out to see every time. There it is, Clearing routes. The last big step is really to draw the, the routes. And here I have some of the functions that are actually used in the documentation in terms of calling some of that routing, which is a little bit of closer to the final product where you have you know, the routes going from each taxi to the person, and then you can start to build out, uh, you know, which is the closest one, um, and then getting to the destination. We're going to create the routes. Let's see. Oh, let's add them. It's a constant. So let's put it in the constant section. Then let's say we have a passenger box coordinates. We are going to create routes from each taxi to our little guy location. So that means they want to create in advance the, or the, or the object that we pass to the routing API. So let the patch coordinates, okay. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's, let's move this to the top where the, all the variables are. And what it does is update the tax patch locations. Yeah, this is the pair, all the taxis towards the location of our guy. Next, let's see. Now we have to just initiate, initialize this right after the set default taxi config. Okay, let's initialize this line after set default taxi configuration. What is set default taxi configuration? So do we end up using the batch routing here since we're going to calculate the routing from the taxis to the passenger at the same time? I think so. I think we're going to use the matrix routing to calculate which one is the closest or fastest to the. Ah, okay. Yeah. So the matrix routing provides a summary. But before doing that, we actually want to display, to draw the routes visibly, and you want to interact with them to get an idea to the whoever you is using the, the application. have the visual feedback to <laughs> see right. which taxi is closest. So you can actually see it physically. Yes. So I can see in the next step that we are going to use the routing API in a batch format in order to get four routes because we have yep. four taxis. Of course, I see the batch items action is an array of four elements with all the pass the batch coordinates for each one. Of course, it makes total sense. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's copy this into our function here. Let's see. So we have okay, we have a variable here called best root. I don't know yet. I assume this is the one who can, who has the best root to be displayed. But we're not using it yet, so but I will put it there. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> What's going on? Ah, ah, God. <laughs> okay, let's see. Now we're going to do the process of the matrix response. I think um, we oh, that's where we get that, the summaries. Yeah, that will we get the summaries. So hmm. very cool. But let me okay. I want to I want I want to understand this better. Oh, all right. I see that when we submit the button, we just set a function the call matrix, and this call matrix will call the matrix routing, and then we process the result. And this is what exactly the function that we were going to be doing now: processing the results, process the matrix response. Okay. This is for the matrix array. You know, the remember the matrix routing, it has a collection of des origins and a collection of mm -hmm. destinations. And in this case, we have a collection of origins, which is all the taxi locations. And a destination, we have the little guy, the passenger. So we're going to calculate the routes for each one. Like matrix. So I guess we just, let me copy this, and we will evaluate this code here. So this is to convert a point long and lat into an object. Type point, so uh, and we have the build origins parameter, which creates the parameter that we're going to pass to the matrix uh, to the matrix routing API, mm -hmm. because we're going to add the taxi coordinates. I can see them here. So the origins are the coordinates for the taxis, and the destination parameters. And that's what we pass in then. Yeah. yeah. 
And the destination parameter is the passenger market location, whatever it yeah, is. Because the taxi's destination is the passenger. Okay, so, and this is, uh, well, you know, calling the matrix routing API is quite simple once the, all the elements have been created and prepared for you. So we can call the matrix routing here. I, I can see the origins, I can see here the destination, this is the API key, and we are going to make calculations with traffic information. And we can include the traffic. Yeah, we have to recalculate some computing traffic. That's the whole point to having a, a taxi deliver, a taxi pickup service, for example. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you process the response. And we are the process the response. We already did it here. Process the matrix it makes response. Makes it look and, easy in the tutorial, I feel like. Yeah. And then at the end, when you click the button, we just call matrix. And that's it. <laughs> and that's it. Here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Call matrix. And that's what we add to the button, basically, to our submit button that we created a little while ago. Yes. You cannot connect to the... There it is. There we go, yeah. There it is. It's so to see the little guy with the routes, but we can still see him. Let's see it. There yeah. He, there he is. Uh, and now you can see that whenever, for example, I hover on top of the route, you see the the route that is being hovered on goes on top, so that you can see it. Ah, the, okay. the, so the whole it line. The, where the where the other ones intersect. Yeah, like for example, the hover over the, the pink one, then it's being. Also, ah, it shows how it goes exactly to our passenger. Yeah, correct. If you go here, the green one, go far. Ah, I like this uh, ornament. Yeah. That's a nice Very feature. Cool. Yeah. Now let's see if you okay if you move the guy a little bit farther away. And click submit again. It does not change it. Lies. It's, it's, when are the batch batch data being uh, here? Update taxi batch locations. This happens with the passenger unique coordinates when the map is loaded for the first time. And hop hop hop. hop. It just happens only once. I this see. thing, this thing, have to happen. Every time we move the guy. Yeah, exactly. So what is the passenger uh, draw marker on map? So in here. That's where we need to add update yeah. taxi back to locations. Yeah, with the passenger coordinates. Yeah. But it has to be with the for the coordinates, the new coordinates. Uh -huh. And the new coordinates is actually is an array, I remember. But the new coordinates is in array format in uh -huh, long yeah. And this thing comes in long, long lat form. So wait, ah, that's no problem. So I know it's an array. And it's this address here, this position. Okay, we can, uh, this is, um, what, what, can, what can we do? We just, uh, we can create a, oh, wait, a constant here, a variable here with the position. With the same value here, this is the position. Because we are going to reuse this this variable. Yeah. Position. And here is position. First the longitude and then the latitude of the object that we updated it. And I think that would that would do it. Yeah, that should update it. Yeah, the values. So let's reload. Okay, and let's submit. Dun, oh, don't don't don't. Perhaps you have to. Ah, there we go. Okay, here it is. So if we click, move the guy a little bit farther away. Let's no. see. Old one fifty five. And it submit again. There we go. There and you now go. we have the routes rerouted. The routes correctly created for you on the used. Well, it's still I we still don't know which one is the fastest. Okay, it seems to be that we're gonna open a little model window. A little screen with a mm -hmm. message which one is the fastest or which the which taxi should go and pick up your little guy. Uh, we're gonna add it at the bottom of the model. Yeah, model content, and so of course, route. yeah. And I assume this this thing is also includes a their own CSS 
component. So it should be in the style. Let's add the style for this <clears throat> model. There it is. This object model. And then we're going to add oh, some, some uh, variables that control this model screen. Yeah, the document model obtains the document for the document, the object that contains the model screen, the content where we're going to add the text and some color. And then we can update the content for our fastest route. Yeah. So let's put this in the as a constants because I think they are constants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to display and remove the model from the screen, ah, to make it invisible, to remove and to display. Oh, so you can basic can you essentially click and remove as well? Well, that's what we want to do. Like you, yeah. you display something and let them go go away, or display a model, dispatch card number with the best route in the. I knew we we're go. gonna use this. That's variable for something. Oh, now we have to <laughs> now we have to assign it to a. a now we have a to create the, the best route pointed towards something. Yep. Yep. So let's see how this guy do it. Uh, we're going to modify the fastest root color. Also, do we essentially like recolor the route to so where it's the same, the fastest route is its own color? And assign the best route index to the object ah, number. Then we, yeah, then we object sort of. So there, we are sorting, I can see the travel time mm -hmm. in seconds. That means we're going to get the fastest, the fastest ah, so we sort the, taxi. Uh, the travel times and then we the assign time. the, the shortest one to the, fa to the, uh, the best route. Yeah, so let's do this at the end. Mm -hmm. Modify the fast color, and at the end, we have to say that when we process the matrix response, please um, adjust. Oh, I'm gonna copy this part here. Process matrix response. Where are you? Here it is. So first, get the fastest, draw all the routes, then display the model in what information you want, which it should tell me which one is the fastest. Okay. Uh, what if I move it right away? Will it work? Ah, you see, this patch ah, so card doesn't work. So this is the this is the uh, model that says this patch card number four because to send. yeah, it's here number four. Let's move the guy more from the center, like here in the downtown area. Let's see, he's here in this pedestrian area, waiting, <laughs> waiting for a taxi to pick him up. Uh, let's submit again. Okay. Ah, in this case, it's taxi, taxi number two, which oh, is that okay. one over there, which is right there, which is the one, this one. I don't see any color, dif any, any different colors on the roots, huh? No, it doesn't recolor because it does say specifically, yeah. you know, something about what, realigning what is, the what color, is, but it doesn't one? seem to, unless it does, wasn't one of the routes going to be pink? Oh. It's... Maybe that is the recolored route. I think it is. I think it recolors it to teal. Okay, let's just try again. Yeah, it's teal. It's yeah. teal. So it assigns the best route color to teal. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> oh, how do we confirm this quickly? Well, when mm, 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 modify the fastest root color, it says fastest root color is this one. Now oh, we, we can change it. We're gonna change it for now to see how it looks like. Yellow. Will it work like yellow? Show me. And there it is. You're right. You were right. Wait. No, it, it, so it doesn't actually recolor them then? Yeah, it does. Oh, it's does? yellow now. I just it's changed the, the color oh, to we yellow. changed it to yellow. Okay. Okay. I, I just see. Did. It's very nice. That's quite, quite, quite neat, though. Quite neat. Interesting. Yeah. Because the, the, the shifting it away from the, because um, I noticed that the pink was gone, which admittedly is, I think, how I figured it out. Yeah. It just re, re, re the purpose of color. Great!
I think the tutorial works. Yay. So after that one yeah. little change where there was the response um, was out of order. Yes. Then well, now we have our taxi dispatch application. Yeah, at least an initial format, very, very nice. <laughs> Remember that we I'm going to put the new and corrected bug free version in our GitHub <laughs> repository. I will the link in the description. And we'll put the link in the description and so you can build your own taxi dispatch application and get the fastest um, get the fastest route and the closest taxi to this little passenger. So thanks for watching us and have a happy mapping day. <laughs> happy mapping. Yeah, happy mapping day. Yeah. I'm gonna take a taxi now. <laughs>